I'm going to try uh, a new technique, uh, or actually a new product on this wood. Um, I'd use West Systems uh, epoxy to try to save rotten wood before, uh, and this is a similar idea. It's uh, Bondo, <laughs> imagine that. But it, it has, uh, it's, it's two parts. Uh, one is this epoxy that soaks in. You do about uh, four to six coats of that. And get it in like there was nothing really wrong with this um but it might have been a tad soft so i let that epoxy uh soak in you know in the end grain um on this you've got this gap in here that was torn out um <clears throat> you've got each area where i went to get um the screws out uh, not the screws but the nails or brads from uh where the body overlaps um and then you've got this area up here that was a little soft and broke when it was coming out of the steel. And then you've got this area here too. Um, what I'm going to try to do is, normally I would just make a new one of these, but I, I sort of don't want the card to be a new car. So what could be saved um, of the car, I almost feel like I'm <laughs> trying to do it a favor by keeping as much of it original uh, without sacrificing anything in the car, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the second uh, part or product on it, with, which is actually Bondo. I, I guess it's formulated a little bit different from the body filler. Uh, we'll see. And get that back down in these holes. First, I'm going to fill, uh, do the, uh, you know, put in, uh, I'm sorry, the matchsticks and, and glue all those in here. Um, in all the holes and then i'll come back and fill this in with the bondo with the uh, body filler is now wood filler um so we'll see how that works um and then in here and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to do uh some test drilling on it um i can drill into this area real easily um, i've got an area up here that i can drill into and basically i'm going to do a destructive test i'm going to drill into this i'm going to try to break it off I'm going to see as I break it off, does it uh, just pick off the wood clean or does it uh, take some of the wood with it? Basically, uh, you know, not a destructive test is I'm going to break this, but <clears throat> break it apart a little bit and see how well it holds. And then make uh, my decision on whether to, to do that on some of the other pieces or to just uh, make all new wood. So I think in the long run, it would be quicker to make uh, new wood. I mean, it's, it's, these are particularly these pieces. This side's flat. Um, you got that last side that's flat on the bandsaw, so it's easy to cut out all the other um, sides and even mark it up. But, you know, in the interest of uh, trying to keep the car, the original car, uh, we'll see how this works. So far, I'm really liking this. Um, it, it's just Bondo, it really feels like. Uh, and one of the nice things I like about it is since it's Bondo, um, or behaves like it, and polyester filler, before this is really hard, you can come and easily, you know, trim off your excess. Um, and so that makes, that makes getting these, as I said, just came down here before it was hard, and just trim those right off, and come and do the other side, trim those off, and so now I've got that roughed in. Come back, fill in a little bit here and there, fill in some here, trim this one to shape, fill it in, clean that out. And, you know, just a couple minutes, um, really going to have this done. I mean, I, I, I doubt this is even going to take 10 minutes. Um, the stuff dries fast, uh, it sets fast. You can feel it, you know, you can sort of feel when it's about right by the temperature. And it's just like the Bondo that you've used before. So um, I like that part. Um, I'm interested to see how well it drills, how well you can nail into it, how well does it hold a nail, and how well does it hold a screw, if it even does. Alright, I'll let you know. Alright, down to the uh, last pass. Um, w one thing I wanted to point out, this is the, uh, the product here, is the direction, say, a 3 inch circle, a half inch thick which is i can only imagine and then a three inch line of the epoxy of the hardener across it um that's great but i typically you mix the uh these these 
polyester filler is always heard with the size of a golf ball with a half inch line. Um, this one ended up a little bit too much hardener on it because uh, I wanted about a quarter of golf ball. That's what I needed left and then a quarter inch on the line. So it's just a little bit uh, long. So this will dry pretty quick. Um, the, the point I wanted to make is if you do that three inch circle, I mean, they, I'm sure they calculated their thing correctly. There's no way you can use that much before it hardens. Um, so it, at least for this, start out smaller um, and put you a little bit of hardener in there and mix that up and then put it on. Uh, and then again, you want to get that uh, a little bit proud of the surface and then, but not too much, um, and then go ahead and you can easily cut it off before it dries. So here's the final result of that. Um, I got it sanded down. So the verdict, uh, it, it is very easy to do. Um, I like that aspect of it. I like that it works uh, like body fill that you're used to using. Um, uh, I'm a purist. Uh, even body filler on metal is bad. Uh, that said, um, if this was a piece that you had to have, you didn't want to replace, um, you wanted to try to keep, you know, keep a lot of original wood, or this piece was incredibly complicated to cut and the fit had to be perfect, you could come up with all kinds of reasons. Um, the, the big test is going to be the destructive test. And given how well this part worked, I decided I'm going to take another piece that I know I am going to destroy and, uh, well, not that, that I don't need, I'm sorry, that, that I'm not going to use, and do the test on that. Um, I'd hate to ruin this thing here because if you can drill that and screw that, um, and if you can put a tack through that and it doesn't shatter, well, I mean, that's great. Uh, the question is, is it going to behave more like wood or is it going to be, uh, you know, is it going to be like hard, hard and brittle? So we'll find that out and, uh, we'll update that afterwards. And, you know, I, I, I think another thing, like, let's look at this. Uh, so you would use this every time. It's fine. There's, there's really not a, any issues on it, but you, you might fix some, uh, not that I would on this one, but. If this one area where it might show or whatnot, you could easily use that filler uh, like this gap right here. Uh, this is a perfect example. Uh, you put that in there, no big deal. Uh, you get this corner, you know, you'd probably never do that otherwise since this is wrapped up inside uh, a piece of metal. Um, and this little detail here, uh, a couple spots in here. It, it's certainly easier to work with than uh, the traditional uh, wood filler. So um, we'll we'll just have to see. A part of the challenge of, of putting this back together is that you could put the frame together, um, and you get it glued and screwed, and it would be fine. But it's not necessarily going to match uh, the sheet metal because the the way they did it was they put the frame together and then they wrapped the sheet metal around it. Of course, they had um, Templates and cutouts for all these pieces. So those um, in fact if you look at the, the joint between here uh, The receiving hole for this is yeah, within maybe not a quarter of an inch, but At least an eighth of an inch wide you can actually there's a good you can see here how they they um, did this they, they overcut it um, So that it, it would it's a production it would fit in there and they had a jig to hold these in the right places um, so that when they wrapped the sheet metal around them, they would be just right. Well, we don't have such a jig. There's a good bit of play on how these go back together. So I've gone and glued this one and screwed it in. Um, I've glued this one and screwed it in. And I've set them down in um, the sheet metal. I pulled it uh, taut here, 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 and here. So this should get these two joints set at the right angle. Um, I'll then go, I've got uh, this front piece in and the front piece up here. It's not uh, glued in yet, but I have it screwed in. And then from there, I can go and measure um, the distances here, get the angle of this, and go ahead and cut this beam. I've made the markings on it to make sure that um, that I took off, uh, you can see the, the lower one on the bottom, so that 
you know, if I make a, a big error uh, in my measurements, it'll be obvious. So as I take my measurements, it should hit right here where I've got these copied. And so I'll go and uh, make these cutouts and then um, test fit it down here until it falls in this place. Um, at the end, we have a 90 and then uh, this new piece that we'll have goes in there. So it'll be a little bit easier to fit this piece because it will be loose. It goes in this slot right here and it just needs to be um, uh, 90 degrees or really parallel the surface with that surface. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start taking the measurements here and then uh, cutting them in this piece and see if I can get that laid in uh, while these set up. And then uh, I should be able to then test fit this, take it back out, put it in, glue it, screw it, and then put it back in the sheet metal and make sure it still fits. So I'd be able to have a little bit of setup time on the glue so I can tweak it a little bit. Uh, to get it in there. Um, I've got the backs of these uh, glue joints taped so that they hopefully will not stick the sheet metal. So then I can take the sheet metal back off, prime the sheet metal, prime the wood, and put it back together for the last time. I made a uh, small change. Um, I realized that I could put this board back in and get it in the exact holes and uh, get it set in the exact spot. Um, and then I cut a piece to fit in here um, to hold this piece in place relative to here. And now I'll be able to take this piece off, take this out of the sheet metal, um, and then lay the new beam in or new sill in and, and cut a slot for it. So this should be um, much more accurate because I know everything's in the right position. Um, this went back in in, in the same holes. Um, and then this is a nice snug fit here and uh, let's see if you can see under there it's a good fit in here so it's going to hold this piece uh this piece in this exact position and then allow me to lay in the uh, sill and mark it on on both sides um and so that that should work fine i think uh i might even try to do that for the other one i i hope that i still have I actually I don't think I can I think uh, this one's broken a little bit you can see this is sort of an interesting detail here these two screws um, appear sort of original and what they're for is to fix a crack um, in this wood and you know I, I don't know if uh, when someone was rebuilding this um, that they went and replaced that or if it happened later so but those uh, those are holding uh, a crack together I got this uh, glued up now and out of the sheet metal. So the next task here is uh, to come in and replace this front piece. You can see here how it's got a chunk missing here and then it's a little less obvious but there's a chunk missing here. Um, the bottom's okay. Uh, it's a little beat up. Uh, so I'll be able to, to take this one piece out and then put it back. Um, or, well, not put it back, put, put the replacement in and still be able to maintain uh, the angles here and make sure they're right. And then the next piece will be this piece in the back. And you can see um, this gets a square. Okay, so it's, uh, it's basically squared at the back. Um, and we'll get this piece here. And be able to drop it in here um, and get it lined up and I've got a little bit of trimming to do on this one um, this well you can't see it quite well but this in and uh, eh, that one's close but I need to take a little nibble out of that one and uh, get this in the right spot so I think the idea is that this is the way it is um, you can see that this this matches here this matches here these were the gaps um, I don't think that this wood has shrunk up I think they just had that big a gap and they had a template that they set this thing in um, and they weren't really relying on the contact here uh, on this joint um, they were just using the, the surface area here and the three screws in it um, so I guess that's just the way it was done um, 
I guess the sheet metal sort of holds it in place too, but I, I don't know. I mean, that's just not, not joinery that you would expect. Um, all right. So then the final piece, once we get that in, is to take this whole bottom sill out and replace it. And the basic idea on that is we've already got this thing cut, um, but we'll be able to come in and, and make a form, a guide, really, so I can uh, make sure that that taper and the, and the bit on the outside, uh, really the curve that goes into the sheet metal is correct. And since we have the rest of this in here, we'll know hope you can pick this up on camera, but these are essentially on the same plane all the way down. Uh, so there's not really a curve from here down. The curve is just this way. So this is one plane this way. So as I get this bottom piece in, I'll be able to make sure that the curve matches this top piece, comes into here, meets here, and then meets this in the back. So it shouldn't be too hard. Um, it certainly would be a lot worse if, if there was a one plane here and then another one, you know, rolling this way. Um, there's a little bit of a, a round off on the edge, but it's not much in the wood itself. So that's good. To get the, um, the right shape on this, um, and I think I said before that it, it only uh, was curved in one plane, and of course that was incorrect. Uh, the bottom, uh, or this is top or the bottom. I guess this is the, uh, the bottom on this one. The top is a little bit wider than the bottom. So it does work a little bit in two planes. So what I did was I uh, traced this out on the cardboard here um, and then cut that out and then glued it to each side. Um, did that trace the other side of this, glued it to this side. Um, I've got a reference mark um, on this board and on that. Uh, and then I put on the... Um, on the templates that I cut out and then transferred it over to this board and then that allowed me to get these matched up correctly. Um, the first cut that I made actually was really close. Um, it was helpful back in this area uh, to get this trimmed in a little bit more. Um, in addition, the uh, the angle here was not really constant. It's a little sharper, um, well not sharper, m more vertical here in the back. Um, so that had to be accounted for. Um, I've gone ahead and fit um, this in. It fits good. The next step is to continue on this piece here. I've got it cut uh, to where it goes in here just fine. Now again the, the problem with this is, is this piece needs to be matched to go into It'll sit in here, but the bigger thing is it needs to sit in here. So I'm going to need to take this um, panel off, take it over to the bench, and work on getting this to fit exactly right in there. Uh, there's a, a couple little uh, issues up here. Well, not issues, but uh, little details um, where that has to fit into there. It has a piece cut out of here for the piece that goes back up to the top. So while making this piece fit here, I will also go and make the other two pieces fit um, back in here. Hey, we're getting a little closer. So I've gone and temporarily fit uh, these back pieces in. These are, sorry, these are uh, glued and screwed. They're good. Um, I test fit this joint. I've got this in approximately the right place. I've got the um, sort of this, this frame that goes in here uh, to where it would attach to the uh, quarter panel. And then you can see it goes in these holes right here on this piece of wood. Okay, so this frame is sort of central and because it runs all the way up here then goes into the front piece right here and then in these two holes right here and then it is uh, mounted into the sill. So that basically controls the fit of the back piece and the front piece because you can see it's limited on that end and it's limited on this end. So I have dry fit that together. Uh, I found the same silly gap that was on the um, when I took it apart. So I guess that's 
normal? I, I, I don't know. Uh, the gap that's not right is this one right here. It's a little bit high right now. But I basically cut this sill at two and a quarter, or I, it should have been two and a half. I think I cut it at two and a half and then planed it. Um, just, I, I don't know why I did that and not planed it. I it ran it on the joiner just to smooth out the joints and took off a quarter inch. Um, and you can see it's, it's sort of all the way along. So I've had to, of course, the bottom has to fit correctly which means I've had to offset, let's see if you can see in there, offset all these pieces, offset this here, and offset that there. So when I go to glue these up, this is not glued, that's not glued, I will go ahead and, and make uh, inserts to put in there to get that right. Um, so we're going to tighten up this joint. Um, it's, it's not all the way in. And then glue that, glue this to here. Um, and go ahead and uh, before I do the glue and I'm going to run the the holes for the uh, screws in here all the way along and then I will glue these up protecting the inside so it doesn't stick to the inside um, and uh, run in the screws and then run these in and connect it to the back and then let that sort of dry in place and so that will complete really this side um, then all we do is do the uh, next side and sort of the back and the front and we'll be done so so far um, other than screwing up the uh, cell um, it's, it's, it's pretty good okay while the uh, passenger side uh, the glue on that dries um, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the driver's side. Uh, on this side, uh, this piece is usable, this piece is usable, uh, this one is, this one is not, and this one is not. Um, fortunately, I was, I could at least get this glued back together to get a pattern. Um, I might scarf the top and bottom on this. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, one nice thing is uh, the cells are symmetric so to speak obviously there's a right side and the left side but um, I was able to take these uh, templates off uh, the right side the passenger side um, and just you can turn them over and I can stick them to the other still uh, other cell and I uh, cut out the shape so that'll be a lot easier than what I did before um, all right, so I think that's going to wrap this one. Um, when we come back, we'll uh, we'll do the right side and uh, or, or the driver's side and uh, take this one out and uh, see how it turned out. Thanks for watching.